How many of you feel encouraged to know that we are a part of God's passion project? I mean, that is a, a blessing. We need that encouragement that God Amen. has God's people to go on to higher heights. So Amen. we just thank Brother Harper for doing an outstanding job and proclaiming God's word, uh, considering the, the time constraints. Oh, it was good. Us, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. For that. Amen. Now it's time. We're getting ready to uh, to break off into our, our breakout uh, session and throughout this day. Yes, Lord. Uh, like the understanding of our speakers so that they, they may teach and preach your word. As yes. You yes. So that all that hear it will be edified. And mm -hmm. so you will be glorified. Yes. Father, we don't know uh, what's on everybody's hearts this morning, but you know. And I truly believe that you have a word for us on this day. Amen. All we have to do is open our hearts and our minds. And clear our minds, Father, that we can receive your engrafted word that is able to save our souls. Yeah. Yes, Father, Lord. thank you so much for Jesus, the one who made all of this possible. Yes. Father, you took our place on that cross, mm -hmm. sacrificed yourself through your son, and made it possible for us to have life eternal yeah. through his resurrection. Yeah. And so, Father, again, we just say thank you. Continue to watch over us and bless us as we go through this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Church, say amen again. I was just informed that um, I'm the guy that's going to be doing the welcome and right. uh, the introduction on this morning. Amen. amen. Uh, no problem with that. We've been having a good time with the Lord. Amen. amen. God has been good to us. We've been um, blessed with some dynamic speaking, some dynamic preaching, uh, panel discussions. I just feel like my cup is running over. Amen. amen. Had a wonderful time last night. Got a chance to hear uh, Brother Williams on last night. Did a phenomenal job um, in the Lord blessing us with the word uh, of God. And then we heard from D.C. Uh, Washington uh, on, on last night. That's the word yep. for it. My Lord. <laughs> <laughs> my Lord my yeah. Lord. I've not heard it like that before. Amen. And we were really blessed uh, on last night. Uh, passion between uh, the sheets. Appreciate him. Praise the Lord. Praise and the then, Lord. Uh, lastly, but certainly not least, we heard uh, from Brother Clayton Kenson. Who's your dad? Great message on last night. I, I know who my dad is. You know who your dad is? <laughs> I, got a, I got a great dad. Amen. After last night, you better know. And so we were blessed on last night. Had a phenomenal time uh, in this place. And so this morning, this morning, there is no let up because we have a great dynamic uh, man of God who's going to come and bless us with the word of God on this morning. He's none other than Brother Richard Coffey Sr., He's the minister of the Sweetwater Church of Christ. Just got a dynamic, growing, thriving church up in uh, Jacksonville, uh, Florida. Had a chance to spend some time with them uh, on last week. And I'll tell you, it's a church that loves to praise uh, the Lord. Right. Made a mistake and called them a Pentecostal Church of Christ. So, but he made me take that back. Amen. They just love to praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, nobody looking at me watch. Mm -hmm. The preacher get up, nobody look at the watch while they're praising the Lord. So we appreciate him so very much. He's here. He's been on the battlefield for a long time. Just a stellar preacher, a pillar uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, he is my friend. I appreciate him so very much. He's a sage. He's full of wisdom and the knowledge of the Lord. He has with him his wonderful wife as well, Sister Coffee, first lady of the church. Here's the man, Sister Coffee. Appreciate her so very much standing by uh, his side on this morning. So after another hymn, another hymn on this morning, the next voice you hear will be that of Brother Richard Coffey, Senior Minister of the Sweetwater Church of Christ. That church, amen. amen. God bless you. Appreciate it as uh, Daniel appreciate him for an introduction. And as he has said, I have myself enjoyed all of those who have preceded me. They have done a phenomenal job. I want to thank uh, the lectureship committee in particular, Brother Corey Glover for extending me this invitation to speak. I'm sure they could got anybody other than me, but I'm grateful to it, and uh, I won't take uh, make slight of it. Appreciate this opportunity to come, and uh, don't start my time yet, because I've got to, you know, get things out. Uh, uh, once we get it out, then you can start. I'll give, I'll give you a thumbs up. One thing about it, when I get to my, the end, you don't have to worry about me going over. Just let me know, and I'll stop. I, I am very courteous at doing that. 
Uh, what a wonderful theme we have, Modern Family Matters. That, that's the, the church. We, we, you know, we need to make God's word relevant to the times. Uh, one of the reasons we are not doing the attracting that we should. Now, don't get me wrong. The gospel is still the gospel. We can't, but it has to be relevant to the times. Many of our own people are turning and walking away because we don't address their needs. And the Bible always addresses our needs, but we don't address their needs. So we, that's, that's a wonderful theme, and I'm not going to preach on that. But, 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 but I want you to remember David said uh, in the 11th division of the book of Psalms, and this always stays front, uh, front of my mind. David said, if the foundation yeah, yeah. be destroyed, yes, yeah. what shall the righteous or what can the righteous do? Yeah. And I, I contend that the righteous, in spite of everything else, should stand so the foundation doesn't fall. Uh, we were talking, every, 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 every speaker has mentioned something similar to this, and even in our workshops, uh, Brother McClendon, and even in the panels, what you brought in yesterday, have talked about that we need, our leaders need to be more visionary, so that we can understand the dynamics of what the blueprint for the church is all about, and stand on those principles. Uh, I know that we want members, but let me tell you something. You do God's will, you get your members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get your members. Uh, now, now you can start my time. I'll just make an announcement. <laughs> my, uh, my subject uh, comes from the fifth chapter of the book Ephesians, and I think our brethren have done a tremendous job uh, dissecting the book uh, in Paul, and I'm going to read, a, I think he's got me about 12 verses here, and I know I wouldn't finish that if I'd done all 12, but I'm going to read them. Paul writing, and Paul says, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. He says, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Yeah. He says, but fornication? Yeah. Now, you're talking about relevancy? Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about relevancy? Uh -huh. There it is right on the scripture. But fornication? And all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you. It becometh saints. And he didn't stop there. He said, and neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor gesturing, which uh, is not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. He says that for this you know, he comes back, so this is obviously uh, something that we need to address. He says, for this you know, that no homemonger, nor unclean person, nor covenant man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And let no man deceive you with vain words. Uh, for this cause, these things come to wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And be, and be not you therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkened, but now in your light in the Lord, walk as children of light. Yeah. For the fruit of the Spirit is all godliness and unrighteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works yeah. of darkness, yeah. but rather reprove them. Last verse. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them. Yeah. 
in secret. Now, I'm supposed to speak on the holy, uh, on the power yeah. of holiness. Yes, sir. Yeah. And at this time, I'm supposed to tell you that I won't be long. <laughs> but uh, I'm not telling the truth. That's just politically correct to say that. Because if I did everything that I just read, yeah. I would be long. But in the text, Paul has been talking up until this point about doctrine. And when he gets to chapter 5, he, he now he wants the church to make, it needs to become practical now. Now, now doctrinal things need to become real in our life. If, if we're going to uh, understand what the dynamics of, uh, of, of power of holiness is, we first have to understand now that doctrine has to be practical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, it's hard to go out in the street and convince anybody until they can see that in us. Living changing lives. And, and, and one of the, and Paul, if it, nobody else, Paul could write. Because Paul had said earlier uh, in the Bible, in Galatians chapter 2, Paul said, uh, he said, I'm crucified with Christ. Yeah, yeah. Nevertheless I live. Get my eye. Paul said, it's not me. Right, right. I'm not the same Paul. I'm not the one that held my garments and stole. Paul said, I've changed. Yeah. When you talk about holiness, Paul said, I've changed. But Paul didn't say, I've changed because of Paul. Right Paul said, the life that I now live, yeah. in the flesh, he said, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And I, I contend this morning, if we're going to unharness the power of holiness, then we're going to have to get out of the way. When the Jesus said, except the man deny himself, yeah. in other words, every once in a while we're going to have to hide behind the hedges. Get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Because all of us have likes and dislikes. Yeah. And those, those are what hinders us, our likes. All of us have a comfort zone. Yeah. We don't want to move out of that comfort zone. But, but if we're going to be pleasing, if we're going to be able to unharness the power of holiness, we're going to have to get out of our comfort zone. Amen. It's more than just showing up. You have to get out of our comfort zone. I, I'll be where you want me in a minute. But, 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 uh, and then the idea of power, uh, folk, especially in our society today, people love power. Everybody want power. And if you want to have a product you want to sell, put power in front of it. They got power bars, power drinks, power taps. My favorite, power naps. <laughs> Everything got, it don't want power. Uh, we, we, we got, we got, we got, in, in Acts chapter 8, don't you remember Simon the Sorcerer? He seen those, seen the apostles, what they were doing. But what, wasn't them doing it, the power of God working through them. And Simon said, let me, let me I want that power. He wanted to buy it. He wanted to purchase it. And I can see his intent. He wanted to be able to buy it and distribute it to who he liked, his friends. Those who were just like him. And the main thing he was gaining monetarily off of it. And anytime we can gain monetarily, so so we have to be careful and understand what but but now when Paul made his statement in Galatia, Paul understood the dynamic. Well, if you're going to uh, unleash the power of holiness, you've got to go through something. And I always say, 
Holiness is a process. We got folks from all different walks of life in the church, and we got some folk, I don't know about here in Miami, but some folk been in the church 20 years and have, don't even know what holiness is. Because we have to understand, brethren, that we baptize a lot of folks. They get wet, they come out, but they never, but they never embrace what holiness means. They'll show up, complain, and go home. Those are the ones that always cease your thoughts. And I don't mind. Like, they're the ones that always complain. But, and, 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 and Paul is talking about the church. He's not talking about the world. We understand. The world doesn't have the same vision. They don't even understand the gospel. They haven't embraced it, such as us. But to have the power of holiness, you and I must be able to be willing to make an unconditional surrender. Lord, I said, understand. Lord, hear my. Send me. I want to make an unconditional surrender. And many times when we say that, do we know what we say when we say it? Because when you become a minister, an elder, a deacon in the church, there are many sacrifices that you will have to make if you want God's blessings. Well, it's not about being convenient. you you got to give up something. Paul talks about that in his ministry. Paul said he shed many tears. And, and, and you're going to shed some tears. You, you, you're going to find your spot on the floor, on your knees. If you are a minister, you're going to go through that. You're going to go through that, and that's what's going to start buffing you. That's what's going to start preparing you to be able to understand what it is to have holiness. How do, we don't have members. We have some, but we don't have many members who are willing to do that. Amen. In fact, the first thing they want to say, I don't know why I got to subject myself to that. I want you to think back. What did Jesus subject himself to for you? The Bible said that they spat upon him. Can any of you go through that subjection, that test? They said they mocked him. He saved others. Himself he can Many of us couldn't even take that. Remember, we've been with them, been, been pulled our switchblade out so fast. They mocked him. Bible said they planted the crown of the. That, that's, that's, that's two things. That's humility. Then the pain that was endured from the thorns of, of the crown. Mock him. And everyone who thought he thought was his friend, even those disciples, had walked away. And let me tell you something. There are going to be some lonely nights when you lead. As an elder, as a preacher, there are going to be some times like that. But, but now we're talking about holiness. And, 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 and it's an absolute necessity that the church needs that. Our brethren need to understand Oh, that's a whole lot of minutes. Let me see. Yeah, I turn it this way, it looks bigger. But, yeah, uh, but, 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 but there's a lot of things that we're going to have to be subjective to. Now, let, let me tell you, that comes with the territory. Well, when you look at Jesus himself, when you look at those apostles, what each of them endured, 
went through, the trials that they suffered. And many of them left great lessons on our behalf to try to take up with and try to strive to, to reach that in this life. And it's possible. I'm telling a younger man the other day, I said, well, uh, he's talking about he want to preach. And it's okay, we should. We need more preachers. Uh, the reservoir of good preachers are drying up. We need more preachers. But he done learn Acts 2.38. He's going to go out and set the world on fire. I told him, I'll be standing by. I had the matches when you get ready for them. <laughs>